So just to jump right into it, uh, you know, I did mention already Donald sacks Joe and the game is over. That was clear. That was Aaron Donald, um, defense uh, on the defense for the Rams, and Joe Burrow, um, quarterback of the Cincinnati Bengals. And you can see even in the, the, you know, the second part of their name. So I said Donald Sachs Joe, but his name is Aaron Donald. Aaron was a priest of God. Wow. And, uh, so it's significant oh. there as well. And then Burrow uh, means to tunnel. And so Joe the tunneler, and we don't have to go too far with that. And then Aaron, the priest of God, wow. as Donald. And so there's a sacking that takes place. Oh my goodness sakes. <laughs> yep. Fun with names and numbers. Hello, Bezel T3. That was Johnny Enlow with Steve Schultz of the Elijah stream. Now, have you ever heard of Tiziography. It's the ancient practice of reading tea leaf or coffee ground sediments to tell the future. Well, folks, it's 2022, and now people do it with Super Bowl stats. Johnny Enlow is the former pastor of Daystar Church in Atlanta, Georgia, and now an international speaker who, like his buddy Lance Wolnow, heavily promotes new apostolic reformations warmed over dominionism, rebranded as the Seven Mountain Mandate. His website, Restore7.org, in the Who We Are section, it states this, this reformation, should say this new apostolic reformation, is a movement of believers who are focused, hopeful, and ready to see change. They are waging war on religion and on the mindsets that have caused God's reputation on earth to be less than it he really is. These reformers love radically. Now, you can't just love anymore. You got to love radically without religion's agenda and believe the goodness of God can be expressed in every let's say, seven areas of culture. Now, here is a video of Johnny's vision of a global community called RISE. We are RISE. A community of doers. Galvanized around an understanding that we have permission, we have permission to contend for heaven and earth. In all seven areas. In all seven areas of religious culture. Now, RISE, best I can tell, it's an app, it's a handbook, and of course, it's conferences, all focused around the Seven Mountain Mandate. Now, Johnny has written a book uh, called The Seven Mountain Prophecy, as well as a book called... It's the end of the world as we know it. <laughs> and the description of that book on Amazon says this, best-selling author and respected prophetic leader respected by whom, I'm not quite sure, and Johnny Enlow believes that often before there is a great awakening, we experience a rude awakening, a shaking. It probably wouldn't surprise you to know that among other uh, NAR celebrities, Johnny is very close with <laughs> Bill Johnson, there's Johnny over here, as well as other NAR, <coughs> excuse me, luminaries. Now, keep that in mind as we get back to using the Super Bowl as a prophetic prosthesis. I meant using the Super Bowl as a prophetic prosthetic. <laughs> Either in the body of Christ or people who are just learning to listen to these type of things think it bizarre and weird that we would get a message out of a Super Bowl game as opposed to only quoting scripture. Now, that's a good question. Is it odd to get a divine message from a Super Bowl game? Well, tell you what, let's keep an open mind and answer that question at the end of this video. Of course, Scripture throughout points to that God hides his communication, and it is he considers it a royal deed to, to be those who search it out and find out mm, how he's communicating awesome. mm, through things. Awesome. You know, Romans, the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. So if he doesn't say it, he hides it either in creation or in storylines. <laughs> you know, these two guys, from all appearances, are fully grown, rational men. But you wouldn't know it from what is coming out of Johnny's mouth. What Romans chapter 1 actually says is this, in verse 18 and 19, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of people who suppress the truth in unrighteousness, because that which is known, known about God is evident within them, for God has made it evident to them. See, God does not.
not hide his communication, but rather has made it evident to all from within. You know, our awareness of God's standard of right and wrong, and also externally. Verse 20, for since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes, that is, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly perceived or seen being understood by what has been made so that they are without excuse. These two evidences, you know, inward conscience and the creation are enough to know that there is a God without a doubt. However, it's only through God's revealed word, and more specifically, the gospel of Jesus Christ, that a saving knowledge of God can be found. The suppression of these truths is what makes all men to be without excuse. Now, how the Super Bowl fits into this equation is totally escaping me. You want to look at every every game and see if God has his storyline that he's advancing there. And in doing so, he'll have, he'll have names and numbers mean specific things. And so he likes to hide his communication this way. <laughs> so it would appear that Johnny has a systematic theology of Super Bowl bulletins all his own. Johnny says that God likes to hide his communication this way. It's kind of like a supernatural screenplay where God throws a short pass that Johnny, with his glue-like gloved hands, is always able to catch as he scrambles for the first down. You know, is that how it works? But, well, I have no clue. For instance, it's Super Bowl 56, and Isaiah 56, 1 says, Thus says the Lord, uh, keep justice and do righteousness, my salvation is about to be revealed. There is uh, an immediate message that's given to us. Okay, Super Bowl 56. So he goes after a, a verse, uh, or I should say a chapter that starts with 56. Well, I can do that too. And I would think that Psalm 56 verse 1 is a far more appropriate message for a football game. It, it says, be gracious to me, God, for a man has trampled upon me, fighting all day long, he oppresses me. Or how about Isaiah 65, verse 4? You see, because 65 is 56 backwards, and 4 obviously stands for the fourth, the fourth quarter of a football game. <laughs> now, we read there, who sits among graves and spends the night in secret places, who eats pig flesh, and the broth of unclean meat is in their pots. Pig flesh, well, huh, of course, that equals pig skin. See where we're going with that? Uh, number two, we want to talk a little bit about justice and jubilee and, and how they go with the message from this year. And it was something that happened every 50 years in Israel. It would be the year of jubilee. The Super Bowl and Jubilee. Okay, well, if you want to say that, Johnny, go ahead. <laughs> now, the number 50 must be critical to decipher this God-inspired futuristic football forecast. And I got to warn you, this is going to be very painful. Okay, so 50th and this Super Bowl. Well, Matthew Stafford, when he threw the winning touchdown mm -hmm. to Cooper Cup, okay. it was his 50th touchdown throw of the year. So the oh, wow. winning... The winning score was the quarterback's 50th touchdown of wow. the year. Shot to 50! Shot to 50! I told you that was going to hurt. Johnny will now reveal without actually saying it that he is prophesying something about Donald Trump bringing in a 50-year Jubilee season. Jubilee is announced by the blowing of the ram's horn. Now, for those who saw the Super Bowl, the Rams, their helmet, a very clear, defined ram's horn is on wow. their helmets. And so that's Seen what's that. taking place. It could be called ram's horn. It might say trumpet. It might say shofar. It might say trump. So Whoa. all Whoa. words are the same thing. <laughs> so is Johnny saying that God, through the Super Bowl, is giving him a message that Trump will maybe be the next president in 2024? Well, it kind of sounds like that. I, I can't say for sure. I'll tell you what, let's look at one more clip. <clears throat> and so you have Matthew is the quarterback that threw the 50th. Matthew means gift of God. So Matthew, and he's playing for the Los Angeles. The angels are oh, behind wow. 
All right, I, I think that's enough of that stuff. And I've got to give Johnny credit here. He definitely gets an A for imagination. Now let's get back to that question that we asked at the beginning of the video. There's still, I understand, people either in the body of Christ or people who are just learning to listen to these type of things think it bizarre and weird that we would get a message out of a Super Bowl game as opposed to only quoting scripture. Okay, do I think it's bizarre and weird? Well, not really. Not when you have a movement like the New Apostolic Reformation that indulges in such outlandish, unbiblical activities as people proclaiming themselves and other, others as modern-day apostles and prophets in the first century sense. Uh, goofy signs and wonders such as gold dust and angel feathers floating down from the auditorium ceilings grave soaking and fire tunnels, physical healings with no evidence or, or proof of anything that was really healed. And finally, the idea that the church, with its apostolic leaders in charge, is to take over and control the seven mountains of worldwide culture. Well, then, no, I don't think it's all that bizarre at all. <laughs> now, do I believe it's God actually giving messages through the Super Bowl? Of course not. You see, people like Johnny Enlow and Bill Johnson are nothing more than theology of glory hounds. And by that I mean <clears throat> they want what is promised in the new heavens and the new earth right now. They totally misunderstand the words of Habakkuk 2.14, for the earth will be filled with the, with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. They think this can be now and strangely have been thinking that for quite a while. But this passage won't and can't happen now in this present evil age. But it will happen when the words of Revelation 11, 15 and following come to pass. This is where Johnny should be seeing symbolism instead of the Super Bowl. Now let me read from Revelation 11:15 to the end of that chapter. The kingdom of this world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he will reign forever and ever. And the 24 elders who sit on their thrones before God fell on their faces and worshiped God, saying, We give you thanks, O Lord, the Almighty, the one who is and who was, because you have taken your great power and have begun to reign. And the nations were enraged, and your wrath came, and the time came for the dead to be judged and the time to reward your bondservants, the prophets and the saints, and those who fear your name, the small and the great, and to destroy those who destroy the earth. And the temple of God, which is in heaven, was opened, and the ark of his covenant appeared in his temple. And there were flashes of lightning and sounds and peals of thunder and an earthquake and a great hailstorm. Wow. <clears throat> now, if you want, um, you know, if you want more, more uh, kind of second coming, final judgment, new heavens and earth language, I, I don't know where to point you. I mean, that to me is, even though it's not the end of Revelation, because I don't read Revelation chronologically, that is a picture of the second coming, the final judgment, and the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven, right there at the end of chapter 11 of Revelation. Now, if you want Trump symbolism, well, then there's other places we can go, like Isaiah 27, 13. It will come about also on that day that a great trumpet will be blown, and those who were perishing in the land of Assyria and who were scattered in the land of Egypt will come and worship the Lord on the holy mountain in Jerusalem. Telescope that forward, and you're talking about the day of the Lord, that great and terrible day, second coming, final judgment, new heavens and new earth. And compare that to the words of Jesus in Matthew 24, 31. And he will send forth his angels, and with a great trumpet blast, they will gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of the sky to the other. You see, until that great and terrible day, Christians in the NAR need to step off the glory train, cool their jets, and submit to the revealed will and word of God. You know, Jesus prayed, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, that we would submit our wills to the will of the one who created us and the one who redeemed us. And I'll leave you with Romans 15 verse 4. This is the hope that we should have. 
For whatever was written in earlier times was written for our instruction, so that through perseverance and the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. Again, a hope that is in line with Paul's witness to Felix in Acts 24, 15. He said, having a living hope in God, which these men cherish themselves, that there shall certainly be a resurrection of both the righteous and the wicked. That hope grounded in the gospel, should give us an assurance of salvation and a real motivation to proclaim that gospel to a dying and already, apart from the gospel, condemned world. It is God who will save sinners. Our job is simply to witness to his truth.